This program is brought to you by Guiding Light Assembly. I know today it may seem like, what are we celebrating? And of course, yesterday I, I experienced it with mixed feelings. And it didn't feel like anything was happening until we had the vigil. Which is also a reminder that when you are looking at something and it feels like this thing is not working, that is a time to go into the place of prayer and you start speaking life into that situation. And you start speaking God's goodness into that situation. And you start trusting God and asking him for direction to navigate the situation. And sometimes all you need to do is just to be silent in his presence. And the moment you are silent in his presence, he will start showing you in the way in which you should go at that point. Last week, Sunday, we had a very lovely sermon which Pastor took us through where the roles of princes and servants have been interwound. And he gave us some steps to take to show us or to remind us that we need to take our place as princes. I don't want to go through those steps again, but I've titled the short message I have today, The Princely Seed. The Princely Seed. Or for some of us, we may say the seeds of princes. And I would like to read from Matthew chapter 13, from verse 1 to 9. It's a short exhortation. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Seeds need a particular environment to grow, as we know. Light, water, oxygen, temperature, good soil. And I look at the life of Nigerians, and I see that we are like seeds. But the beautiful thing about us is, no matter what happens in the environment around us, we will grow. The soil may not be right, we will grow. We don't have enough water, we will grow. There is no light. We will grow. And that has been our testimony over the years. It has taken us places. It has helped us as a nation. It has defined us. But yet, it has not changed us. Or let me take that again. It has tried to define us. But the environment has not been able to define us. And I always tell people one thing. We keep laughing at the fact that we have churches on every street. And why is it that things have not changed? And that's because God is still with us. And God will not look down on his church and reject his bride. Even though the bride may not be perfect, but he will cover the bride in white. And the bride will become perfect. Some seeds do die. And that's because they don't have the right resources. And sometimes it is better to leave a seed on its own. You can keep a seed for years and just leave it. But the moment you try to put it in an environment where the mix is not right, you may lose that seed. And we as children of God 
we have that mix or we have the right, the access to that mix. And until we start to use that mix, we will not see a change. We blame a lot of things on our environment. Yes, things are bad, and I will not take that from us. We say the church preaches the gospel of hope, but yet everybody is tired. And sometimes a lot of us get irritated when we hear the voice of hope. But we'll have to continue. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. I just want to take this because it's, it's a scripture that reminds me and encourages me a lot. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of, of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And like I always share, you can lose everything, but don't lose your hope. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your faith. Every other thing can go. But as long as you can keep that, all those things that have been lost, all those things that have been wasted, they will start coming back one after the other. And it may seem as if things are not working out. Well, I look at this same country of ours, and I try to see how the environment was about 20 years ago. And there are some changes that I, I noted down. Just a few thoughts. Today, we see younger people getting positions in government. Maybe not enough, but it has started. We see female managing directors of banks. This was something that seemed impossible years back. Not to even think of it, but it is happening. We hear a national anthem being sung by people winning gold medals in sports. Years back, if a young person tells a parent, I want to go into sports, they will say no. You have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. If you are playing football on the streets or in your neighborhood, they will chase you away. But now, people are paying for their children to learn sports. We see international investors buying Nigerian companies, companies that are not up to five years old. They may not be perfect, but yet this same nation that seems to be one of the worst nations on earth, all this is happening. And so much more that I cannot mention which means that some seeds are thriving in this environment. So you have a choice. You can either be a seed that is growing and is looking for its source and has the right mix of its source and knows where to find its source, or you can become a seed that is complaining about the environment and saying, I don't have enough light, or I don't have enough water, which is what we face in the physical realm. Either you complain or you don't complain, you will both grow. But one thing will happen. Either one grows a 60, 100 fold, or one just remains a seed, and it continues to grow. And as children of God, we are supposed to populate the earth. Today, and everybody worries about the Jackba movement. And I laugh. I say it's not about people just leaving Nigeria. And why do I say that? I'm troubled about it as well. You have friends that you are talking to today, and by the time they call you tomorrow, you see plus something. Or you see their, their WhatsApp status has changed or you see pictures, or you have somebody who you've been talking to on the phone and you don't hear from the person again. But I heard another word yesterday. It's called Japada. It was the first time I was hearing that. And when I was laughing, the Holy Spirit said something to me. Nigeria is going to populate the world and rule the world. 
So when people say there is japa, let them japa. Because when the time comes, they will japa down. And what happens when the japa dies becomes, they become better, they become stronger. And most times, the skills they've developed, they will use it to come and develop our nation. So if you are worried about it, relax. One thing I've also realized is people are worried about those in the diaspora. And I hear it in the news all the time. Oh, this person is here, the money they are sending to you, put it here, and all of that. It's all part of it. Some nations of the world, that is how they live. Now, I'm not encouraging everybody to run away. If you are a team lead in an organization, or you are the head of the organization, your strongest team member is probably going to call you when September comes and says, I'm leaving. The next one in line will probably do the same. And most likely the next year, you also, you will do the same. It is happening. And people have different reasons for doing it. People have different reasons. Some are genuine reasons, some are not. Some have sworn never to come back. But some have said, look, all I want is to move on a global level. And that is how we should be as children of God. Nigeria is not enough for us. We are Nigerians. That is the platform God has given us. But we are supposed to rule the world. And we will do so in Jesus' name. And I just want to celebrate some unsung heroes. If you are a taxpayer, you are an unsung hero. Maybe you've not made it to become uh, one of the titles we give people, national titles. But you're a hero. You're an employer of labor. You're a hero. You've worked, you've retired. You're a hero. You've left a business that is still running. You're a hero. You've obeyed all the laws. You're a hero. You sponsored people through school and invested time and resources in them. You're a hero. But the one that is most important is the hero the Lord celebrates. That's the one who has invested time and resources in his ministry. And I'm still going somewhere. Because for a lot of us, the frustrations, the anger, the resentment we hold, it ties us to the past. Because those things have happened, and most times we are getting angry about things that have happened. And the fear and the anxiety we have shows that we care about the future. So don't feel bad when you hear that the exchange rate is like this. But it means that you are going to do something to change it. But you see, we have peace when we have faith and confidence in today. And we have that peace. That is why the Bible says we have the peace which the world cannot give. We have the peace which Nigeria cannot give. We have the peace which the president cannot give. Nothing can take that away from us as children of God. And I'd like us to go into the story of Joseph briefly. And it's just to remind us that sometimes it may seem as if the environment does not seem right. And I say the environment does not seem right because the story of Joseph comes with a lot of mixed feelings. There's a part of betrayal, but yet it was overcome by love. And there's a part where it reminds us that even if you think you are in a good environment, there is a better environment waiting for you down the line. And I'll just quickly read from verse 7 to 14. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. Genesis 42, sorry. Genesis chapter 42. From verse 7 to 14, Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about and said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. 
And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are no spies. But he said to them, No, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying you are spies. And you see, at this point, Joseph had two options. He could have killed his brothers at that point. He could have allowed his emotions to take the best of him. The hurt, the anger he has kept over the years. He could have said, hey, I've caught you people today. What you did to me, I will do it back to you. And all these things meant that as Joseph, it seemed as if he was in a perfect family growing up. It seemed as if everything was right. In fact, he had the vision that he was in a perfect family. And yes, he was in a perfect family. If his brothers didn't do that to him, he won't have saved them years down the line. All of them would have, they would have all died from hunger. But you see, not only did God deliver them from hunger, God took them to a higher place and a better place. And it goes to show, again, about the kind of seed we have in us and the focus on the environment and not on us as the seeds. For those in agriculture, you know one of the, the most dangerous things that could happen to you is if you invest in the wrong seed or seedlings. And the painful part is you might not know until three, four years down the line. And then you realize that you planted the wrong seed. And then what happens? You start telling yourself, if I had known. Because the environment was perfect. That's what you thought. But you discover that this thing is growing. There is a tree, but there is no fruit. And for some of us, we always say that family is right. Yes, I, I come from a wonderful family. I, I would not take that for granted. But I've seen people, and I know some of us have experienced it, that even blood brothers and sisters can't see eye to eye. Or when they see it, superficial. But that doesn't stop or change who they are. And there is a lot of focus. There is a lot of focus on what happens in our environment. But like Joseph, we should use the spirit of love to overcome these things. Leaders will continue to hurt us. Nations that seem to have gotten it right. Today we are 62 years old. And you have nations that have run this democracy for 200 years. The same complaints we have about our leaders, they have the same complaints about their leaders. The only difference is maybe they have access to more information about their leaders than we do. And they have better ways or, or they, they can protest easily. And there are things that we see all around us that it may seem like these things are not working. But you see, all it takes is a seed. And I'll touch another subject, a bit delicate. It's our educational sector. The schools have been closed for months, yes. I schooled in Nigeria, and I know I lost a year to strikes. Not at once, but different months. But you see, this same educational sector, today, we hear is sending doctors to the UK. We hear is sending engineers to the US. We hear of people leaving this same sector and going all over the world, which means that that seed continues to grow. So if the environment is not right in this place, the environment moves to another place and it starts to grow. Some of us witness people who probably finished with a bad grade in school, maybe a third class, and they had to withdraw them. And then they moved to the UK. And then you hear, oh, he finished with a first class. And you are wondering, ah, 
What do they give them there? Is this not the same person? Indeed, the environment might be better over there. But guess what? That seed has not died. Some people call it the Niger spirit. Some people say we are relentless. They say if you push us to the wall, we will make a hole in the wall. They say all sorts of things. But that is who we are. And God did not place us here in error. Sometimes I have asked God, why, why Nigeria? Of all the countries in the world. I mean, why didn't you just do it that land in the U.S. or U.K. or Switzerland? These nice countries, that everything seems perfect. But so we think. Until we get there, we also see that there are some imperfections. But what I'm going to today is this. And I've always said it. We say a lot that Nigeria this, Nigeria that. And sometimes I ask myself, are there ghosts in Nigeria? Who are we blaming? Nigeria is made up of Nigerians. And as long as Nigerians continue to prosper, Nigeria will prosper. And we need to position ourselves. God is going to move us from a place of reproach to a place of redemption. It's going to, it has to happen. And that is why yesterday, instead of people marching in the stadium, people were marching on the streets. It's not about voting for one person, because that's what it seems. It's about the fact that people desire change. And people believe that that change is possible. And that change can be done. And we as Christians, we have a greater place of responsibility. Sometimes I look at the Jews in the U.S. They are very quiet. But at some point, I don't know if it's still the same, it is said that they control 5% of the U.S. economy. Are they protesting? No. Are they screaming on the streets? No. What are they doing? They are developing their seeds and developing one another. And what happens before you know it? These guys, they've taken 5% of our economy. So what happens is this. Before any decision is made, any economic decision, you need to find out if it's going to affect the Jews. And that is why sometimes I say that there are things that would happen in the most developed nations of the world. And before they take that decision, they will say what will be the impact with our relationship with Nigeria. That is where we are going. It has started. Some things happen and we think it's a coincidence. It's not. It is God showing us that in the midst of this environment, I'm going to raise my people one by one and I'm going to position them. And we have to position ourselves and we have to be careful. Because sometimes the attacks that we face, they are not a coincidence. You are good at what you do and there is a special attack on you. And you are wondering, why me? Why me? You are not ordinary. Your light cannot be hidden. And you are part of the guiding light. I always go back to this guiding light because that name is not a name that just came up out of coincidence or sounds nice. And we all have to continue to show that we are ambassadors of guiding light. So when people are attacking you left and right, even in your business, it's because you are shining. <laughs> if your business is not shining, they won't care. So if you know that tomorrow or Tuesday, for example, there is a petition waiting for you, the Lord is going to give you the grace to deal with that petition. Because there is a place he's taking you to, far beyond what you can imagine. And another point that I'm going to declare today is God is going to redeem the lost time and give us the Issachar anointing right from conception. Which means that even for generations on board, unborn, whatever it is that may seem like it is lost, they will recover it. And they will recover it well. In Jesus' name. The Lord is going to redeem our name. The Lord is going to redeem our name. It's been said for so long that this country is this, this country is that. 
sometime during the week, uh, in, my, in my WhatsApp group, in my university, someone posted a job ad in the US. And he wanted, to, he wanted us to debate on a comment. The comment said, the person posted it and said, Nigerians not allowed to apply. And everybody was screaming, it is discrimination, it is this, it is that. And myself and two people said something. He said, let's forget about the negative side. It probably means a lot of Nigerians have applied to that company and they want to have another mix. A lot of Nigerians have the skill set and they said, look, we cannot have only Nigerians working in this. And a friend of mine who is based in the U.S. said, that has to be it because nobody in the U.S. can place a job ad like that and just write something like that boldly because there will be consequences. Sometimes we need to see beyond our immediate environment. And we need to see that where God is taking us to is beyond places that we can imagine. Some of us will make it to Asorok. Some of us will make it beyond Asorok. But the most important thing is this. We will be princely seeds wherever we find ourselves. And I'd like us to just read Matthew 13 again as I, as I round up. I'd like us to worship God at the end of this sermon. If we go back to Matthew chapter 13, and now I'll take it from verse 11 or from verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But this is for us. But blessed are your eyes for the see, and your ears for the hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And that is our testimony as children of God, as Nigerians. And as we thought last week, if we don't learn to take our place, the servants will take it. But the beautiful thing is this. The Lord is always there to help us to take our place. No matter how far back we've gone. It may seem as if, if we look at Adam and Eve, for example. They, they, they said they were naked. And God said, who told you you were naked? But if you read further down in that scripture... It was God who clothed them. The same God. So no matter what it is, He is there. And the most important thing is this. In as much as we look forward to working with Him, He also desires to work with us. And I'd like to close on Nigeria by reading Haggai chapter 2 from verse 6 to 7. Haggai chapter 2, from verse 6 to 7. You can display it. Yeah. For thus says the Lord of hosts, one more, it's a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and it shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. And the Lord says, he will shake all nations and they shall come to Nigeria. And I'm positive with that. Because what people have said, we will laugh at them, that they always call on God over everything. Instead of building factories, they are building churches. That is why we will be the desire of all nations. Because we serve a God 
who is the desire of all nations.